Welcome to Whiskeys for Drinking, Waters for Fighting. And in fact, the first question we're going to address today is actually, why is it called that? But before we do that, just wanted to let you know, this podcast is about all things water. We're trying to bring out the, some order to water chaos, especially here in the West. We, we tend to fight about water and we tend to try to figure out about water. So we're going to talk about why. So we've got a group of people who all have some different things in common, but we also come from, from very different places. So, so uh, John, kick us off. Tell us a little bit about you. You got 15 seconds now. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, John Robitaille. I'm uh, the CEO of Encore Green Environmental and the director of the Carbon Asset Network um, here in Casper, Wyoming. Great, great. Darren, go. Hello, Darren Smith. Uh, I am the chief technology officer for Encore Green, and I also help uh, companies improve their ESG performance. And, uh, and I'm the only Canadian in the group. Yeah, which we actually, uh, we just overlook it for the most part. Uh, <laughs> Marvin, tell us about you. Uh, my name is Marvin Nash. I am a retired professional rodeo clown after about 30 years. I was uh, went to work for a major oil and gas company, EOG, for four or five years, and my wife and I stepped off and co-founded Encore Green Environmental, which metamorphosed into Carbon Asset Network, Synergy for Ecological Solutions, and anything and everything that looks like it may, may have anything to do with water, soil health, uh, what I like to identify as the total ecological solution. Very good. And I'm Jeff Holder. I'm in Los Angeles, California, which these other guys kind of overlook as well. And I'm uh, the COO of Encore Green Environmental, and I'm the volunteer director for the nonprofit Synergy for Ecological Solutions. And in fact, that's who's sponsoring us is the, the nonprofit Synergy for Ecological Solutions. And in some episodes, we'll be talking about what we're doing. But, but really, the topic of the table is this, is there's a phrase out here in the West. And the, one of the time, first times I was, Marvin and I were talking about kind of water and stuff like that. He said, well, you know, Jeff, uh, whiskey's for drinking and water's for fighting. And I, I never heard it. And I said, well, what do you mean? You know, and so we kind of talked about it. And so really, we're gonna kind of go into that. So let's get started. So the question on the table for today is, why is water for fighting? We say, you should be drinking water. But why do we fight over it? John, John what, what do you think? You know, Jeff, out here in the arid west, uh, early on when, when the settlers came, uh, you'll notice that all of the, the private land is, is really bound around uh, live streams and rivers and that sort of thing. It's because it's so critical to everything that we do. Uh, the way that we, we manage our, our water rights uh, if you are the first one to file a water right, you're the first one to use that water right. Uh, if, regardless of where you are on the stream, it doesn't matter if you're upstream or downstream. So uh, the, the, that term comes from, from a long ago when, uh, when, when people would be filing water rights. And if I'm downstream from say you, uh, you have to let that water go to me until I get my my appropriated amount of water, and then you can use your water. Now, let's say it's a dry year, uh, and you're going to start pulling your water out before it gets to me. We're going to have a little issue, and I'm going to come see you, and we're going to we're we're going to start fighting over it. So, so really, that's what it's for. Uh, you know, water water's for use outside, not for inside. That's another another term that's been kicked around over the years. You know, a, a famous fighting for water actually is in my area, it's in the West, but it's Los Angeles, which we don't think of as a desert because you look around and there's palm trees, and green grass and people's lawns and things like that. But the only reason why Los Angeles uh, isn't a desert really, because it, it, technically it is a desert, but it's an irrigated desert, is because really back in the 30s, there was a big fight for water and there's quite a lot of uh, controversy around it, but basically water from the Colorado River 
is what, you know, I'm drinking in Los Angeles. And that's actually the basis of the movie called uh, Chinatown. Actually, it's kind of a fictional version of that. But but because um, everything revolves around Hollywood here in Los Angeles. But uh, but that was basically the city of Los Angeles effectively, some would say, stealing water from from uh, from other places to divert it down here because to build a city. Right. In the 30s, Los Angeles was starting to grow as a city, but you've got to have water. We need it to drink. We, we need it to run businesses, you factories. You just got to have water. Other thoughts? Why, why are we fighting over water? Yeah, uh, in, in, to build on what uh, John was saying earlier, you know, the, the, the past, uh, the historical record is full of uh, disputes around water. But, but ironically, nothing's really changed in the West. You know, we still have this extreme drought in a lot of cases in a lot of areas. And, and there's even here in Wyoming, there's even been some uh, cases where small communities, uh, their water treatment plants have run out of water uh, because the, the rivers that they rely on have dried up. So, so it's, you know, uh, the guys reminded me that Mark Twain apparently uh, was the originator of this statement, but, uh, but really uh, water still is for fighting in the West. Nothing's really changed. Uh, communities are still along water sources, and uh, and now that we're now that we're in extreme drought, I think maybe the the fighting's different, but uh, it's still it's still very significant to people's livelihood. Marvin, thoughts from you? The the two gentlemen that have spoken before me are highly educated in 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 academia and have studied a lot of this. Uh, I'm just an old country boy from South Texas that uh, we knew what a drought was. You know, we have burned the pricklies off a prickly pear just to keep the cows alive. And I've, I've seen it be 115 during the day and uh, 100 at night. Uh, I've seen major, very wealthy agriculture farmers and ranchers plant hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of seed, not knowing whether they were gonna get any rain or not, knowing that, it, that everything was a risk because of water. And so, you know, when you, when you weigh the risk versus the rewards uh, and you start that migration of, of, you know, if you just study American history from the East to the West, uh, it, it all, like John mentioned, it all centers around water. You know, I'll, I'll, you, you can go back and see when Elmwood Mead came to Wyoming and, and the, federal government made a deal with the Mormon church to try to colonize some of these areas. But even you can go back all the way to biblical times, you know, when Moses had done the walk, you know, and they all got there and hey, yeah, great, we're, we're free, we're free. And all of a sudden somebody realized they didn't have any water. And, you know, I, not to be a, a preacher here, but I think Moses was told to throw a log or a tree into the, into the the dirty water and he did and it became clean and and once the water became clean everybody was happy so you know what what did what what's the scientific i can live three minutes without air three hours or three days without water and me i could probably live 60 days without food but i think they say 30 days but you know water is is a an an element I don't know, Darren, is it an element or a component? Anyway, it, it's, a, it's one of them scientific makeups. H2O is, is an element, but, but if you don't have it, you don't have survival. And, and so I, for me, I think when you really get down to what water is about, water not only is about growth and, and production and expansion, it's, a, it's a, an element of survival, just like air. And you know, you, you don't have air, you're not gonna be here very long. So, so I, I, maybe I look at it a, a little different in that for me, without water, there is no survival. If you look at the dust bowls, if you look at all of those things, the depression, all of that came about because of a lack of water. Uh, but I, you know, to me, I transition is, you know, why is whiskey for drinking? Because Whiskey's of less value than water. I mean, what, what where do we make the, where does that transition come from? 
Right. When, and uh, a lot of it, I think, is the, the saying is there just to point out that water is just so valuable. It, it actually, uh, a shot of water is actually more valuable than a shot of whiskey. Um, you might get some people to disagree around about midnight at night, you know, we're, we're in a bar, but uh, that's where we, that's where we run into this. So what are some examples? I, I mentioned Los Angeles. Um, I don't know, are there other examples where, where you've seen water? Is it, uh, like I think of sometimes, you know, the, the, the B Western cowboy movies where different ranches were fighting over rivers or streams or things, or uh, have you guys had, had there in the West I examples of that? Jeff, uh, for, first of all, uh, water's a compound, uh, Marvin, because when you, when you assemble uh, some elements Isn't together, uh, they become compounds. Um, but, but and, and so I, I feel like I'm always taking this conversation from the past to the present, but, but uh, at, uh, and, and be coming from the energy industry, the one industry that's uh, critical for our prosperity here in Wyoming is the oil and gas industry. And the oil and gas industry uh, uh, uses a lot of water. And uh, and and now uh, what's and now with this new administration and uh, some of the moratoriums on federal drilling and federal leasing, uh, uh, production companies are forced to conduct their business on private land now. Or state land, um, but uh, so that means they're going to have to acquire their water from private landowners. And so now I think landowners may be in a position between supporting the oil and gas industry or growing the food they need to keep their cattle herd uh, uh, viable. So, um, so I think I think we're 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 going to see uh, probably even bigger fights, fights uh, between uh, big, maybe big corporate ranches and big corporate corporate uh, oil and gas companies maybe coming next. So there won't be necessarily shotguns involved in this fighting, but it will be lawsuits. It'll be political maneuvering and that, that kind of a thing. It'll have a different flavor, but it's still fighting over water. Not necessarily, Jeff. Remember, you're still in Wyoming. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we have seen that in the past. Um, one of the one of the things uh, to really mention it, Wyoming is a headwater state, which which means that that Wyoming supplies the water to places like California, like Arizona. Uh, we we do that through through various agreements called compacts that that the states have all come together and they all agree on. Those compacts require a, a specific amount of water be delivered from Wyoming to say you in Los Angeles. Now, what that does in a dry year, that makes us look for water elsewhere. Water that we would have taken from the stream, now we cannot take. So we've got to go perhaps drill a well or, or find that water somewhere else. So when, when to tie into what Darren was suggesting, if, if we now have additional water wells being drilled to help drill these oil wells, which is critical for, for Wyoming's economy, perhaps we're gonna get into more of, a, more of a pickle with how are we going to manage all of this additional loss of water, which we, we wouldn't have had to deal with prior. So, so yes, it's, I, I agree with Darren. I think we will see more fights coming uh, as it's becoming a, a more and more critical resource for us. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, here in Los Angeles, we, we have droughts all the time. Um, and the, the way we know we have droughts isn't that it doesn't rain because like, hey, it hardly ever rains anyway. But we know we're in a drought because our water bill goes up. <laughs> I mean, that, that's just how it is. They start uh, kind of rationing water and then penalize you for, for using certain amounts over certain thresholds that, that they, um, seems like that they measure out in thimbles uh, of how much water you're allowed before they start charging for it, but uh, charging you extra for it, premiums. But um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's very real. So whether you're really in the city or actually you're in open land or in a more of an agrarian world, it, water is really a, a source of contention because it has such value. And without it, things really fall apart. Not only industries, like you're talking about, Darren, but also then cities, actual survival. So uh, any, any closing thoughts for, before we wrap up this episode? 
you know, you, you're, you're there in Hollywood and that, that brings me back to, uh, to all the old, all the old Westerns when the, the dusty guys would walk in off the trail and, and they step into the saloon and they say whiskey. They don't say water, they right. say whiskey. That's right. That's absolutely right. Well, that's it for this episode. Follow us, subscribe to us. We're here to talk about water while we're fighting about water and all the different issues that go into kind of a water chaos that we got going on right now. We'll see you next time.